You guys are in for a fantastic show tonight. And to start things off, we got a little surprise for you. A gentleman stopped by today. Uh, he actually stopped by. He's been a finalist on Last Comic Standing. Uh, you may have... He's from England, and the reason I say he stopped by is because of the volcano. They won't let him go, so he's here. <laughs> so he's thinking, what the hell, I'll make you laugh. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Matt Kirsten, everybody. Matt! James Connolly, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. It's true, it is a volcano. Has my, I'm, I'm in America, my girlfriend's in England. Uh, a volcano has stopped me from getting laid. <laughs> Where does that ever happen to anyone? I mean, seriously, that ridiculous. So, uh, how are you, people? You good? Yeah, of course you are. It's nice. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, sorry, someone just asked, is that true? Yeah, it's, it's not just a joke that we thought of backstage. You know, like, you can vouch for that, right? Other people? Yeah, like, massive volcano in Iceland, ash everywhere, we can't fly. Ridiculous. Uh, thank you for a polite, just question. <laughs> Some places people heckle, but here it's just, you know, just queries. I like that. I, it's the kind, no, no, seriously, I love that. It's the kind of thing you get in America anyway, because you're all American and therefore you're all polite. And, and that got a laugh, because no one has ever told you before in the history of you being Americans that you're polite people. And, no, you have no idea how polite you are. You think we're the polite ones. We're not. Well, British people, we are mean-spirited, arrogant people but we sound delightful. <laughs> it's a trick. Love it over here. And look at you as well. I hadn't been here for a while. Look at you suddenly all big and grown up with health care. <laughs> I know. Well, well, amazing. When did that happen? Welcome to the 20th century, people. That <laughs> Congratulations. I've been, I've been fascinated. I've been following it back home. We've been watching the news, following little struggles and trying to get it passed through. Obama being compared by some of the right-wingers to Hitler and the Nazis um, for his policy of wanting to bring health care to poor people. <laughs> you know, like Hitler did. <laughs> I mean, we all... We all remember that was Hitler's back, big thing back in the day, wasn't it? He was, he was the angry guy with the moustache and the hair, and he was like, oh, I'm Hitler. Um, some people don't have health insurance, and if they break their arm, they could be in thousands of dollars of debt, and I'm going to put an end to that, for I am Hitler. Uh, and that's why he had to be stopped. <laughs> you remember, right? And there was a big war, it was all in black and white, and there was singing, and... Uh, we won, and the Germans got to go back to paying for medicine. Uh, fascinating. We're fascinated with American politics in Britain. We are, because the thing is, it affects us. That's what you don't realize. When you're voting for your, your president and your vice president, your congress and your senators, you're electing the people who control America. And America controls the world. So you're electing the people who control the world, but the world doesn't get a say in it. So we're just watching you guys going, please don't fuck it up. <laughs> please. <laughs> just let the clever black man do it. Just, <laughs> let, just let the clever black man near the books and the buttons and the paper and <laughs> keep the scary woman away. Uh, <laughs> keep... Holy shit. She might go for it again in two, th like, like two years' time. The fucking hell. Just don't. <laughs> Keep the clever black man there. Don't let the woman who genuinely believes that fetuses have feelings, but homosexuals don't. <laughs> Which is ridiculous if you've ever watched Steel Magnolia, say, w you know, with a gay man and an embryo. <laughs> you just see which of them gets upset. It's not first trimester Johnny who's crying. <laughs> He, he doesn't even have any tear ducts yet. Uh, where's it going to end, though? That's the argument. <laughs> that, that's the thing. Oh, yeah, you let gay couples marry. What next? You let the gay couples marry. You let them have those rights. People want to marry their dogs next, won't they? That's the argument. I love that argument, because I don't, I don't morally agree with it, but I can't find a logical flaw. Because <laughs> it's an exact analogy, isn't it? You know, man and a man, woman and a woman, Man and a dog. 
<laughs> oh, if you really want to nitpick, if you're really being pedantic, you can maybe point out that dogs can't give consent. <laughs> Gay adults can. <laughs> a dog can't stand in a church and say, I do. They barely mastered sausages. And sausages does not imply consent. <laughs> not even in a gay wedding. <laughs> Those are people, thanks for listening to my little part of this evening. I'm gonna try and get another plane. Take care of yourselves. I'll be Matt Kirsch and enjoy the night. Matt Kirsch and everybody, Matt!